So the rotator cuff anatomy. So there's a ball and a socket joint, right? The humerus is the arm bone. The humeral head goes into the glenoid socket of the scapula. And there are four small muscles. So the supraspinatus is up on top, then the infraspinatus, teres minor, and subscapularis. So these small muscles work together as a cuff to support the shoulder when reaching up and or out, preventing that humerus bone from riding up in the joint, causing impingement pain or kind of pinching in that subacromial joint. So here's a picture of the anatomy involved. So you can see the supraspinatus is up on top and that's the one that's most often involved in injury. Beneath that, the infraspinatus, teres minor, and then on the underside of the shoulder blade is that subscapularis, so kind of deep inside. So why is a rotator cuff at risk for strains and tears? Well, there's variable anatomy with each of us. The shape of the acromion or the bone of that scapula can be flatter on some folks, it can be rounder on some folks. There can be bone spurs in the joint that the tendons rub on that can lead to some tears. Most often there is some muscle atrophy. Uh, we don't tend to do a whole lot of strengthening that's specific to the rotator cuff. So those muscles often atrophy. And then oftentimes there's an infiltration of fat that can affect the muscles. So there's a decreased quality of our tendons. So the tendons attach the muscles to the bone, okay? So there's not a great quality of those tendons to begin with. And then as we age, they don't get a great blood supply um, and nothing to do to change that. Smoking is a major risk factor. So other than aging, smoking is the single biggest risk factor. So that along with diabetes, high cholesterol, rheumatoid arthritis, those all increase the risk of damaging the rotator cuff. Also overuse activities. So a lot of folks that do work overhead repeatedly. Uh, trauma, so falls or lifting too much overhead. Those are gonna put you at risk for damaging the rotator cuff. And poor posture. So these last three factors that we talked about, we have control over. So the first couple can't do anything about, but we can do a lot about the last three. So that's what we'll talk about. Okay, so optimal body mechanics. So this is where Maddie's gonna help me out. Please go over that again. The box from the floor to the table. So first you're gonna get the staggered stance. So one foot a little ahead of the other. Shoulder blades back and down. She's gonna hinge from her hip. So she keeps that all nice and straight. She's really close to what she's lifting. Keeps it close to her. She's gonna walk it over and then put it down. So see how she's using her legs, right? She's not overreaching and straining her shoulder, okay? So same idea, bringing it back to the ground. Staggered stance, slide it really close to you. Use your legs, step, keep it close as you come down, okay? So most often when people put groceries in the trunk, that kind of thing, they go way too far away from them, right? We've got to bring everything close to us to not strain that shoulder, okay? So shoulders are very picky about posture. So always want to think about this before you go to reach into a cabinet, before you lift anything, before you do anything with your arm. The shoulder is picky. It really likes you to be back and down, okay? So to get that position, you've got to be standing up really tall. So Maddie has a perfect ponytail here. I always say, bring your head back on your spine. So a little bit of a chin tuck and bring that ponytail is getting pulled up to the ceiling, okay? That should make you get taller and turn your belly on. If this is nice and straight, then those shoulder blades can come back and down, okay? So that's in a good position there before you go to reach or lift, okay? So the shoulder joint likes you to be turned this way, like you have a full can in your hand, okay? So whenever you do reach or lift, 
always pretend like you have a can of whatever you want it to be in your hand, okay? So when she reaches up and forward, it's gonna be there and not turned over, okay? Even out to the side, she's gonna keep that can in her hand, okay? That makes for a lot less pinching at that joint on the top here as you come up all the way, okay? So just go all the way up, full can, keeping this back and down, good. Now let's turn to the wall there so they can see from behind. Do that one more time. So see how her shoulder is away from her ear, okay? There's none of this. So a lot of times people substitute with that upper trap muscle. Don't wanna do that. Keep this back and down as you go through the range, okay? That's the way the shoulders like it, <laughs> okay? All right, so now, so for strengthening exercises. So we wanna try to warm up before we do any strengthening. So several different options. You can certainly just go for a walk and let your arms just swing, okay? So again, keeping those shoulder blades back and down, swinging those arms is a great way to warm up. If you wanna use one of the machines, going backwards is really good. So retro cycling or pulling back on an elliptical. Uh, the new step machine we use often. Rowing machine's another good option. You really wanna think about pulling more than pushing. So functionally, most of us do a whole lot of pushing throughout the day. Um, we use our front muscles a lot. So whether it's lifting groceries, hugging, moving things on the counter, we push a lot more than we pull. So that leads to tightness in the front and weakness in the back. So we're always trying to get your shoulder blade muscles stronger so that we can get to that back and down position of the shoulder blades. Okay, so pulling more than pushing. In general, strengthening can be performed with whether it's resistance bands, free weights, or just your body weight. Depends on what you have around and what you like to use. You do need to remember that the rotator cuff is comprised of small muscles. So you really wanna use a low load and slowly increase the number of repetitions you do. So we usually start with one set of 10, lead up to three sets of 10, maybe two sets of 15. Once those get really easy, then you can add just one pound at a time. So I've seen a lot of people that go way too fast with a progression and they go from one pound to five pounds and they find themselves in trouble. <laughs> they can't do that, gotta go slowly. You also need to do slow controlled movement without any pain. So there's joint pain sometimes at the top of a motion, you don't wanna go that far. So none of the strengthening exercises should cause pain. If you're a little sore after, that's okay as long as it's muscular fatigue. So I'm gonna go through this list of exercises. Um, there's kind of a top 10 for rotator cuff strengthening. Um, and I'm gonna have Maddie's help with this. So we're gonna use some hands and some weights and then some body weight and mix it up a little bit. So, scapular retractions, pulling your arms back. And I like to pull it around at the very end. So see how her palm is facing forward at the end? That helps to, again, encourage these shoulder blades to be squeezed in the back. Nothing is coming up here. She's just pulling back and down, okay? So you wanna have enough resistance that you can go that far without pain, okay? And the last couple of repetitions should be a little hard to do. That's how you know you're doing enough work, okay? So the other way to do it is rows, so bending your arms and squeezing back. Uh -huh. Again, always picturing the shoulder blades squeezing back together. Now you see she has perfect staggered stance and she's standing up nice and tall. Again, you can't bring these back and over around a thorax. So you cannot be here and pull back. It's not the way it works. It's gotta be up tall. So good posture. 
You have a question here. Yep. Um, using PT three times, three or four times a week, how long, on the average, will a rotator cuff become fully healed? Is it 18 months to two years as the usual time frame? Is this after surgery? Using PT. So it depends on what happened to the rotator cuff. Um, strengthening alone takes six to eight weeks to really see much difference. Um, that's if you've strained it. So after we take down the inflammation and the pain, we get full mobility in that joint. Just the strengthening alone takes a couple months. If you've had surgery, again, it depends on how many muscles they're putting back together. So like I said, there are four muscles. Sometimes you've torn three out of the four, and that's a large rotator cuff repair. So that's going to take at least three to four months in PT. And then the doctors usually say up to about a year to 18 months for you know, full recovery after that so it really depends on what they've done i know a lot of people try to compare their surgeries and they you know walk down the street and say oh i had that done well it depends if you're rota if you're repairing one little muscle versus three or four it's going to be a much different surgery so it depends on how much was done but thank you okay so for internal and external rotation it's really important to have a towel roll in your armpit so she's going to put this under her right arm what that does is opens up the subacromial space. So I talked about that acromion coming here and the humerus here. It's kind of like this, okay? If you put a little roll here and squeeze it, it opens up that space a little bit, okay? So it also puts the rotator cuff tendons at the optimal length to be able to contract, okay? So we always want a little roll in there. And it's important the angle that you do. So we're gonna go from her belly button up for the external rotation. So she's going to end about there. Good. And if you can picture that diagonal, she's coming from down to up. And again, slow controlled motion. What I like about the band is she's working on the way out and on the way in. She's slowing it down. You can't go too fast. Most people go way too fast. So out two, three, and then in two, three. Okay. You might feel it working a little bit in here. <laughs> okay, now we're going to do internal rotation. So she's going to turn. And same diagonal from up to down. And she's going to come towards her belly button, but not all the way in. So if you stay about a fist away from your belly button, that's ideal. If you come all the way in, it actually squeezes the tendons a little bit and squeezes out that blood supply that is so precious to that area. So you don't wanna go all the way to your belly button. Okay, slow control, keeping that wrist pretty straight and from up to down. Okay, that's internal rotation. All right, so now we've got wall push-ups. So, Three different ways to do the push-ups. The wall is the easiest. You want your hands at about shoulder height. So start with them a little bit lower than you think you need them. Keeping your back, again, really good alignment here. The closer your feet are to the wall, the easier it is. Farther out, the harder it is. But you've got to picture this plank of wood kind of here, this straight alignment she's got. And then come into the wall. And then when you come out straight, we're going to do an extra little plus. So you pretend like you're punching into the wall and see the shoulder blades are doing this. Okay, so and so it's called push-ups with a plus. Okay, good. Now another way to get the rotator cuff working is turning the hands in just a little bit. So about a 45 degree turn. Good. Again, these should not cause any pain at all. With this one, the elbows are going to come out to the side a little bit. So same good position, straight body. You don't want to do any turtling, we call it. So no letting your nose go to the wall. You've got to keep that chin tuck and keep everything in a straight line. Okay, and again, if that's too hard, bring your feet in and get really close and just do a little bit of press there. Okay. Now, let's say those are really easy. With your feet all the way back, you can do a mat push-up. Okay. 
<laughs> so coming down on a stable table desk, something that doesn't move, same idea, straight first, good. Okay. Or you can do it on the floor. So again, really good straight position. Perfect, good form. Okay. Uh, press ups, maybe. Okay, I'm going to sketch next. Okay, so then another good one is sketching. So go up like you're making a V. So start at your thighs, lift up. Again, that full can position is really important. Keeping those shoulders back and down. And again, stopping before any pain. So if there's any pinching at the joint at the top, do not go into any pain. And slow and controlled. So again, up two, three, down two, three. So it's called scaption. You're in the scapular plane. So it's just the way that scapula is made and that's the functional reaching out in front. Okay. Next one is press ups. So sometimes these are hard to get used to. You definitely want to put a little bit of weight through your legs. You're going to press up. This is the only time your shoulders should come up toward your ears. You let them come up and then you press back and down. So again, you're really pressing those shoulder blades back and down. Recurring theme here. Okay, good. Perfect form. Then another important one is lying on your back. For the serratus punches, they're called. So there's muscles on the underside of that shoulder blade, serratus anterior. So you're gonna punch up and down. So just a little bit of that shoulder blade motion. And this you can usually use higher weights for than the scaption. So let's say you're using one or two pounds for scaption, you can use just about double that for the serratus punches. These are bigger muscles. Perfect form. Okay. And then let's stand up and do the bicep and tricep. So two other good ones for generalized arm strengthening is the bicep and the tricep. So just curling up and down. Again, slowly up two, three, down two, three, holding your core really tight. So I shouldn't be able to come over and knock that odor. Just really tighten that core. Shoulders are back and down. Good. Okay. And then the triceps. So this is the best way to do it without straining your shoulder. So arm up, straightening, and bend. Good. So your shoulder's not moving, you're just using the triceps. Elbow stays up toward the ceiling, slowly up and slowly down. Okay, so that's a list of the top strengthening exercises. Now we're gonna go over the stretching. So let's get on the roller. So there are lots of different things you can do with a foam roller. So again, if you have trouble getting into that good posture, the head back on the spine, getting your mid back really straight to allow for those shoulder blades to come down, the roller is a great way to do it. So she sits at the very end, lies back on it, so it's along her spine. Her feet are hip width apart. Knees, hips, and feet are all in line. Arms are relaxed down by her side. She's gonna start with a pelvic tilt, so just gently flattening her back. And she's gonna hold that for 10 seconds. Good. And she's breathing the whole time. So this should be very relaxing. It should feel good. Again, no pain. So you know how I mentioned we're tight on the front and weak in the back. So even if you don't do anything, if you're lying down on the roller, gravity is pushing down on top, stretching everything out. The roller is along your spine and you're getting straighter even if you just lie there. 
everybody's favorite, doing nothing. So hold it about 10 seconds, doing 10 times. There are also different variations of the roller. If the big one's too much, you can do a half roller. It doesn't move and it's lower to the ground. There are smaller, rounder rollers too. So there are a few different options. They also make really soft ones. You can do it on a bed. You can do it on the floor, on a mat. There are lots of different options. So pelvic tilts is the first thing. The rest of the time you're on the roller, you wanna keep it pretty flat, just about halfway, just so you feel like you're not gonna fall off. The belly muscles are engaged. And do a chin tuck. So you're lengthening that neck. So you're not lifting your head up off the roller. Tucking that chin and lengthening that neck. Good, about a 10 second hold, 10 times. Good. So again, picturing that high ponytail, pulling that head back on your spine. Then you can do some shoulder rolls and again, just backwards. So we tend to do too much forward already. Sitting at our desk, looking at the computer, our shoulders tend to roll forward too much. So we wanna go up and back and down. Make big, soft, smooth circles. Getting those shoulder blades moving. Keeping your belly tight. Perfect. Then we can do snow angels. So this one you have to be very careful with shoulders. You wanna come up just a little bit while your elbows stay on the ground. Just feeling a gentle stretch across your pec muscles in the front. So just a gentle stretch. Hold that about 30 seconds, then come down. You can also do it with your elbows up off the ground and get more of a full angel. Again, as long as there's no pain, it's just gentle stretch. Just to get your lat stretched out a little bit more. Go all the way up, massage. Yeah. Okay. She's more flexible than I. <laughs> <laughs> so that's full range there. Okay. And then the last thing we say, don't spill the soup. So pretend that there's a full bowl of soup on your belly. You're gonna stay parallel to the ground and keeping your belly tight, go off just about an inch to one side. So what that's getting right now is the muscle between her spine and her shoulder blade. It's pushing her left shoulder blade to the side a little bit. A little more motion there. I always think this feels the best. And then off to the other side. Again, about a 10 second hold each time. It should feel good. So it's kind of like a self massage. Okay, so about 10 of those to each side. Then when you get off, you need to be slow and gentle. Good, and then come back on the floor in that same position. And you should feel a lot flatter. Some people even feel like they're sinking down into the floor. They've actually changed their alignment a little bit and straightened their spine. Okay. The other way you can use it is turn sideways. Let's do a thoracic. And depending on the mobility in your shoulder, you can put your hands behind your head and support your neck. You can roll back and forth. Keeping your belly really tight and your low back supported. Then you might get some pops in here, just some, um, some joints popping back there, and that's okay. It's just an air bubble in there usually. So I have a question. And it says, do you keep first? Let me finish this real quick. So. Yeah. And then you can let your tush down and then go extending back from each joint level. Good, so particular each vertebral level, you're just extending back, going up about an inch, coming down. Good, and keeping your head and neck in good alignment. Good. Okay. Where can we get on the pillow? Let me answer this question. Do the pain stretches. And what's the question? Do you keep first hands? So what I tend to do, palms on the floor. For the snow angels, you always wanna do palm up. Again, that's the way that shoulder likes to move. So you gotta be palms up for that. You keep the elbows down, you just wanna feel that gentle stretch across your pecs in the front, okay? Most people, again, overdo, and they try to go way too far and then it hurts their shoulder. So really down here, because again, you're six inches off the ground on the roller. So you're already here. So you're getting a good stretch in the pec. Okay. 
Um, if you can lift up the elbow a little bit and get a full angel, that's fine, but it's not necessary. You can just stretch it down here. I think that answered your question. Okay, so then other stretches we use a lightweight cane. So it can be a stick, a yard stick, uh, the middle of a Swiffer rod, a walking stick that's not too heavy. So most people are pretty tight into that external rotation range. So she's gonna come back and let the back of the left hand come down toward the floor until she starts to feel a gentle stretch. So you don't wanna go fast and hard with the stretches. So very gentle, hold about 10 seconds and then coming up. So if I'm looking down at her, I see a V. Okay, that's how you know you have the right angle. So the elbows away from the body a little bit and then she comes down until she starts to feel a stretch. Then she can also do a flexion stretch holding on to the stick, going up, keeping those shoulder blades back and down, going way far back again until a, a gentle stretch is felt. And again, holding about 10 seconds, doing four times. I really like these stretches because your shoulder blade is supported on the, the bed or the mat or the floor. Just lets that shoulder stretch out a little bit. Okay, then the sleeper stretch. So you're gonna lie on the involved side. So she's stretching her left shoulder here, bringing that elbow out and then pushing down. So this is gonna help that internal rotation or reaching behind your back. So let's say it's hard to strap your bra strap or tuck in your shirt. This stretch helps that range. So again, just until a gentle stretch is felt, you can hold it about 30 seconds. So the left shoulder's relaxed and she's pushing with her right hand. Then you can do child's pose. And I'll show you another option for this. So she wants to feel a gentle stretch in the shoulders. Palms up if she can. Good. And keeping the mid back down. <laughs> Again, it should be gentle. So if you can get in this position, great. In the yoga, you know a child's pose. Another option for this one is called a prayer stretch. So you can sit in a chair, you can be in a stationary chair or a rolling chair. And arms on the table, elbows, elbows supported and palms up. Coming down so the forehead just gets to the very edge of the table. Good. So see how this is nice and flat? Going down here, should be a gentle stretch in the shoulders. Again, these are away from the ears. Again, holding about 30 seconds and doing two or three repetitions. Um, so as far as using a pillow, when we're doing the ones on your back, Yes, we do not have a second pillow. If you can get your arm level with, if you can get your elbow level with your shoulder. So ideally she would be on one pillow on her, under her head and one pillow under her arm, especially for the external rotation one, that would be the best. Um, for your head, again, it just depends on what's comfortable. Most people need at least one thin pillow. So yes, it is best to do that, the arm on the pillow. Thank you, good question. Okay, now the cross body abduction. So that's stretch. So again, pulling, pretend like you have that full can, crossing across your chest and then pulling it into you. Should feel a gentle stretch at the top of that shoulder. And again, 30 second hold a couple of times. Mm -hmm. Cross your body. So those are all good things to do. Now we'll go back to the slides and talk about what not to do. So here's a list of things to try to avoid, activities to avoid. Okay, and we'll go into details with each of them.
but reaching with palms and thumbs down, we talked about. I've seen at least, I would say, uh, three or four patients in the past few years that have torn the rotator cuff reaching to the back seat of the car. So they're reaching behind them and lifting, whether it's a backpack or a briefcase or whatever, um, that position with that palm down or thumb down, and then they lift something a little too heavy has torn the rotator cuff. So you always want to say that you have full can position. So other exercises to avoid are the upright row, the tricep bench dip, tricep overhead. We'll show you pictures of those. And then lifting heavy weights. So as soon as you go above shoulder height, it's a lot more strain on the shoulder. Um, and out to the side, strains it a little bit more. So you've got to have those perfect body mechanics lifting. And then, of course, falling. So do whatever you can to avoid falls. We'll talk about that. So here's some of the pictures of what not to do. Um, we talked about that reaching and lifting with palms and thumbs down. This upright row exercise, again, if you can see those elbows being way far above those shoulders, it's going to probably make it pinch, causing an impingement pain, and just put that rotator cuff at risk. Again, any kind of tricep bench dip, that's too much body weight, putting that, that shoulder at risk in that position. The tricep overhead. So again, um, young, healthy people are okay doing this one. Um, but as you get older, you should do the tricep like I showed you before. So there's no reason to risk the shoulder while you're trying to strengthen the triceps. So just do it the way we showed you. We talked about the lifting overhead, out to the side. Do you want to do that? It puts that shoulder at risk. And then trying to be like the cute panda picture here. Uh, don't be in a hurry. You know, most people get themselves into trouble because they're just going too fast. Uh, try to avoid any tripping hazards, um, any cords, any scatter rugs, um, thresholds at your house. Um, make sure you turn on a light. So just little things at night. A night light can really help. If you're a little disoriented, you have to go to the bathroom, gotta have a light on so that you don't fall. And let's say you do have some shoulder pain. So gotta try to figure out if it's muscular pain or joint pain. With shoulders, we often get this referred pain into the deltoid area, so the side of our arm, just a referred pain pattern from that subacromial impingement. Again, if it's a little muscle soreness in your bicep or tricep from working out, that's okay. We should not have any joint pain. Ways to reduce the pain, you know, you can use that foam roller to help stretch or work on some tight spots. We call it acupressure. So whether you're using a roller or a tennis ball, you can use a harder ball, like a lacrosse ball, if you can tolerate that pressure. You can do that on the shoulder blade up against the wall to try to find some tight spots. So you're trying to get rid of those tight spots before you stretch. You can also use you know, cryotherapy or moist heat. So cryotherapy is just a cold pack. So we love to use the, the gel packs that kind of mold to your shoulder and your shoulder blade. About 12 to 15 minutes at a time is perfect. You wanna put it in a pillowcase first so you don't hurt your skin. Um, moist heat can also help. It helps to re relax those muscles a little bit if they're tight. In general, I say heat before and cold after. So whether it's a hot shower um, and then stretching and then using the cold pack after to take down the inflammation, that'd be the ideal order. And then using any anti-inflammatories. So Advil, Aleve, you know, if they're okay on your stomach and it's okay with the doctor, sometimes that helps to take away that inflammation in that little subacromial joint. And then, you know, when is it appropriate to come to PT? So ACAC offers low cost screenings to see if PT is appropriate. Um, or you can visit your doctor and get a referral, um, or we can tell you that a visit to the doctor is indicated. Um, we do have direct access. So you can start with us if you need to. And due to this current pandemic we are in, we also offer telehealth PT. So we can see you like this via Zoom. <laughs> we can come to your house and do home health PT. Uh, so just let us know if one of these options um, works for you. We're flexible that way. Any questions at all that haven't come up from the, the chat room? Okay. If you just had time to do a few exercises, which would be best to do? <laughs> uh, well, I didn't give you that many, so it depends on what you're working on. 
Um, if you feel like you are having trouble, you know, just lifting things like a bag of groceries, you know, the bicep curl is probably the best. But to protect the rotator cuff, you know, I gave you what, eight to 10 exercises? It shouldn't take that long to do. So there are lots of different ways to do these. Um, but if you're feeling weak, I would do the stretching, the strengthening ones. If you're feeling tight, it would be more like a stretching program and then get into the strengthening. So it shouldn't take you, you know, maybe 30 minutes to get through them. Um, I always say you have to do this kind of program to be able to do the fun stuff. So let's say you love to go, you know, camping and that requires, you know, working on your RV and lifting things and luggage and, you know, traveling. Um, that's the fun stuff. And you have to keep your arms strong to be able to do the fun stuff. Okay. Um, you have a PDF exercises. Um, you don't have a PDF with the exercises, but we're going to post this talk on the YouTube channel. So if you go to the Physical Therapy at ACAC website, um, the entire lecture will be listed on there. So I have a slide listed with all the, the exercises on there. Okay, so the anatomy for palms up. Um, if you have pain in your forearm, you probably are tight down there. Um, if it's too much of a stretch, you can always do thumb up. So that full can position um, is better than palm down. So it's kind of halfway to palms up. So if you're too tight there, just go to full can position. The direct access I talked about, um, most of us have that ability um, here at ACAC. When you call, they can tell you who has that. Um, so yes, you can come to PT. There are limitations with our license. It's up to 30 days without the referral, but usually we see you for the evaluation and then we send that to the doctor and get that signed off on so that they know the plan of care um, and we go from there. Is it a muscle strength? If it is a muscle strain from overuse, but feel okay doing planks, would this be okay or downward dogs? So plank is a wonderful exercise. It's high level. Um, I love that you're using your body weight. And as long as you have good body position, keeping your shoulder blade back and down, um, I've seen a lot of people strain their shoulder doing planks. So if there's no pain while you're doing it, that's okay. Um, downward dog is a good stretch, so that's very similar to like a child's pose or a prayer stretch. So that's okay. And full can. Okay, let me show full can again. Come on. So that full can is just pretending like you have a full can in your hand. So we talked about the shoulder. If you're here and you've emptied out the can, that's not good for that shoulder joint. If she's holding that can in her hand here, that's much better for that joint to go up from here all the way up, okay? And out to the side here too, okay? If she's here and starts to lift up, it starts to pinch. So like I said, reaching to the back of the car, you're reaching behind the seat here and go to lift, that's really putting this at risk, okay? So you wanna be here and not go back as far, okay? Walk around and get it out of the back seat. But if it's here, just make sure that full can is in your hand and you're not gonna spill it. Thank you. <laughs> full cup, there you go. Don't spill the cup, okay? If you turn that hand over, you're gonna spill. So if you need to go, you need to do one more up on the hand. Thank you. Okay. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Any other questions? Motion for freestyle swimming. So I am not a swimming expert, but I've watched my kids. So <laughs> how much have you swum? Such <laughs> recreationally. <laughs> All right. So yeah, coming around, go ahead and just do the motion. You tend to open up that shoulder again, coming down and pulling through the water, you're gonna be down and pulling through. That's just part of that stroke. So again, it's not bad for you. Okay, if you have full range, it does require awfully good range of motion of that shoulder and the shoulder blade and the thoracic spine. So to be able to get horizontal in the water and to get this 
range, you better have full range of motion of that shoulder or else it's gonna pinch. So it's great exercise for you. Um, and it's great shoulder exercise as long as you have the full range and, and no pain. Um, same thing, whether it's backstroke, again, you're kind of pulling this way and coming around as long as there's no pain. If there is, we just kind of do this. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Any other questions? Yeah. Oh, thank you. Anatomy for referral. Oh, <laughs> sorry, there, there's no body part called full can. Um, it's just something that um, I learned years ago that I think is a good uh, cue, just to remind you where to, where to hold everything. And yeah, any questions, my email um, is on that last slide. You can certainly email me, call me. So as far as a click in the shoulder, it can be a few different things. Um, sometimes the tendons, I know, show you. So the tendons come up here, they can kind of pop back and forth over that bone on the top. Sometimes it's from a bone spur deep inside making that click. Um, a lot of times you can make the click at least decrease, if not go away, if you correct your alignment. So a lot of times people are shoulder forward and they go to reach and they hear the click. I'll say, put your shoulder blade back and down, get in good alignment, hold that there, full can, try again, and it goes away. So it just helps put everything back to where it's supposed to be. So sometimes that helps. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah, okay. All right. Wonderful, okay. I'm gonna just put up the slide with uh, Rebecca's information for everyone to, to write down if you need. Obviously, as Rebecca said, this will be on our YouTube channel, so you will be able to find it there as well. Um, and feel free, I think, to reach out to her with any questions that you have. Um, yeah, so thank you everyone, and um, everyone have a wonderful day, okay? Thanks for listening. Take care, stay safe. <laughs>